introduction. I will try to share my screen. Just give me a second. Is my presentation visible for everybody? Yes. yes I will close this down. OK. Um, welcome to the, the, the webinar on, on the recycled uh, content certification scheme QACR. Uh, short summary, I will introduce BQA, who is the accredited organism who issues the certificates, what is the role of BQA within the system, and uh, the recycled certification scheme itself, which we name QRCR, Quality Assured Certification. Uh, BQA is an, uh, a, certif a certification organism, over 25 years of experiments, uh, with a main focus on SMEs. Uh, this does not mean that we don't take into account bigger companies, but we are very practical and we are all very technical auditors. We certify quality, environment, energy, safety, so the ISO 9001, 14001, and the new one, 50,045. Um, we also audit funding systems, but that's restricted to the Belgian uh, law. And we have special certificates, uh, for instance, a care for quality. And our own brand is innovation and recycled material. This is specifically related to BQA. If you want to see what, in fact, is the position of BQA, we are BELAC accredited. This means that if we issue certificates, they are um, granted for, let's say, the whole world. If you look at a law, you have an author, which is the parliament, and you have somebody who controls that law, that's police and justice. If you have a standard, you have ISO or NBN for Belgium, yeah, and you have a control system, which is the International Accreditation uh, Foundation, and we have BELAC for Belgium, and we are a certified organism, which is BQA. So one of the main important issues is that we are impartial and competent. So this means that we are non-funded, or we don't depend on any company, which gives us a possibility to issue a certificate without being influenced. So the QRCR system itself is a certification for a quality management system for recycling and production companies. For all materials, if you want, can be textiles, can be wood, can be metal, can be plastics, but we mainly focus on textiles and plastics. Why did we introduce QRCR over 10 years ago? There was a clear demand from the government, from producers, from consumers, to reuse material in view of the circular economy. As Dr. Ruma said, I've been active in circular economy for over 30 years, but I remember well, 20 years ago, if you talked about recycled material, everybody said, well, a recycled material is inferior, uh, it doesn't do what it has to do, it's waste. Yeah. But now, Things have changed and we have learned that if we want to save the world, we have to do something with all those plastics and textiles we are currently getting into the environment. Can we reuse that material? So the Dutch army issued the tender for clothing containing 30% recycled polyester cotton. The Belgian government demand 80% of recycled material in a garbage bag. A garbage bag is used for disposal, so why shouldn't we make it from 80% recycled material? And it has to contain 40% post-consumer recycled material. Also in the US, California changes carpet stewardship law from 10 to 28% recycled content. So if you have a carpet which you put on the market in, um, in California, it has to contain at least 28% recycled material. And there's, in fact, it's impossible to determine if a product is made from recycled material. You don't get a hyphen on a molecule which says, OK, I'm recycled now. So in a finished product, there are no determination techniques. You can say, OK, I will check for impurities, but that won't work. You can add impurities if you want. And you can say, well, I will measure the molecular length. Well, you know, don't know from which length you started, so you can't determine if it's recycled or not in a finished product. Uh, why will we introduce QRCR? As I said, quality assured. We guarantee the quality of the products based on the recycled material. 
if somebody would make a child seat for a bicycle and you put on it made from recycled material and you have the same bicycle seat where you put on made from virgin material, most people will choose the virgin material because they don't trust it. If you say it's in accordance with the quality standards without mentioning the raw material, chances are very high that it will be a 50-50 distribution between recycled and non-recycled material. We have to raise consumer confidence because it's our end consumer who buys our product and he has to be convinced that even if it's recycled material, it will perform as it should. Yeah? And also we want to boost the use in recycled material, specifically in Europe, where we have the CPA, the Circle Plastic Alliance, which is a voluntary commitment of the plastic converting industry in Europe to recycle and reuse 10 million tons of material by 2025, which is a huge challenge. Yeah? We want also to boost declarations of conformity towards end products. So the people should believe that there is recycled material and it will perform as demanded. Um, as very specifically, we do a control on traceability and the chain of custody on the recycled material in applications. For instance, if somebody wants to use a recycled PET in food application, you have to be able to guarantee that food application. Yeah? And we also guarantee the absence of specific harmful or toxic products. Um, Electronic equipment, let's say 10, 15 years ago, was made, uh, was made with uh, bromine uh, flame retardants. PVC was uh, stabilized with lead. All those products are currently no longer usable in uh, Europe due to the REACH regulations. Well, QACR has a system tree which checks for those harmful and toxic materials. Uh, what is in fact the QRCR? It's a quality management system and we base it on ISO 9001. Yeah. The quality is the main driver. As I said, it's always the quality which is important for the end consumer. An end consumer will not buy a product due to the fact that it contains recycled material. He will buy it sole purpose that it fulfills its demands. Yeah. We focus on the reuse of material and we certify the declaration of the recycled content of companies. So if a company declares it's, it contains 50%, for us, we will check if that is correct. If it declares 100%, we will check if it contains 100%. Uh, um, why do we do the declaration? It gives you the advantage to launch products in between two audits, uh, and it also allows you to change your product bill of material during the year that you have your declaration, as long as your declaration is correct what's in the product itself. So we ensure the credibility by certification audits done by an accredited certification organism. So the independency and the neutrality and certainly the confidentiality is something which is very important to us. We distinguish three different systems. We call them a system because they are, in fact, they are all equally. A system certification, which is in Europe used to declare towards the CPA, the Circular Plastic Alliance, the quantities of material you have used as a cycle material. We have a system two, which is the system certification from system one and the product certification. So declare on a product what is the recycled content? So at that moment, we go one step further as the ISO 9001, because ISO 9001 does not allow a label on a product. Within the QRCR, we use the principles of ISO 9001 and allow a label on the, on the product itself. System three, as I said, is a system with specific attention to specific substances. What do we do within the system one, yeah. we ask the company, please explain us what do you do with your incoming goods? How do you trace them? How do you develop, as Dr. Ruma said, from recycled material? How do you develop your products? How do you change your bill of material? How do you develop the system itself? What are the quality aspects on your incoming goods, your outgoing goods, and in your processes? 
to determine if the recycled material is processed well. We have a discussion with the people from purchase. Where do you buy your material? Is it post-consumer? Is it pre-consumer? We talk to sales. How do you explain to your customers that you are using within your organization recycled uh, material? And we also check the management vision on recycled materials. Uh, I think there are a lot of operating businesses around the, the screen now. Uh, we all know that the production with the recycled material has some or can have some negative influences on your processing yeah? and also on your process stability and your process output. Uh, so we ask the management, why do you use recycled material taking into account that your production quantities could be slightly less, your product quality is to be managed far better than with virgin material. How do you cope with that? A system two is, as we said, we audit a system one, but we go a little bit further. How do you do the quality check and the traceability of your incoming goods? So do you have audited your supplier of raw material? How do you manage that? Also the product development, what are the demands? Uh, for instance, we had the discussion on the garbage bag or the example of the garbage bag. We have some companies in Belgium, Poland, Germany who are certified to produce garbage bags. Uh, how do you cope with that 40% of PCR material? We check the traceability throughout the whole production and we check them in conformity with the bill of material. So if the bill of material states 40, 40, 20, it has to be at least 40, at least 40, and the rest, the 20 percent virgin material is free of use. And then we check in that order the declaration of that recycled content. And that way we have a full chain of custody throughout the system, for instance, for the people using a recycled pet for food applications. The system three, yeah, it's a level two or a system two audit and we do also product control and eco parameters why do we control it um because sometimes people say okay i will be 100 percent in accordance with reach regulations people having reprocessed pvc let stabilized they can say okay we will separate the calcium zinc stabilized pvc and the let stabilized pvc and we have a system three for our calcium zinc uh, stabilized material. Also specific bromine fire returns, which are extracted or not reused in the system three. So the principles, uh, the quality, as I said, and I emphasize is the primary question. Will you guarantee towards your customer um, the good quality and ensure him that the use of recycled material has no influence on the final product properties. If somebody makes a yarn or a carpet with 30% recycled material, it has to fulfill the demands. Uh, if you have uh, clothing or a, an overall, which is made from 30% recycled polyester cotton, uh, you want your, your end consumer to be able to use it as he would use it if it's it, um, virgin material. A very important issue, internal recycled material is considered as a recycled material, yeah? as do pre-consumer and post-consumer waste. But in the bill of material, it has to be kept separately and also in the end calculation of your recycled material. We all know that a lot of companies are already reusing internal recycled material. If you don't sell it as waste, and you reuse it in the same application, it is a recycled. Uh, this is a discussion which is going on on ISO level, uh, but we consider it within the system as being recycled content. Uh. Additives emerging from a recycling process are considered as recycled material. Somebody who recuperates chalk from his water purification and adds it to the backing of a carpet, it is recycled material. If you have a product conformity, for instance, a CE marking, it can be done by an internal or an external lab. In case of an internal lab, we will audit the lab itself. In case of CE marking, 
Yeah, initial type testing have to be done by externally, and then we check the factory production control. This is, in fact, the scheme we use to see if a product is made from a recycled material. I hope it's quite visible. Somebody sells a product with recycled material. This comes from a production process, can be compounding, injection molding, extrusion, or even an assembly. That process, I will go a little bit further, this process generates recycled material. It can be internally recycled, you mill it or you compound it, and it's fed again as recycled content. You can give it to an external company who compounds it, who recycles it, and feeds it back. This is internal recycled material. This is post-production recycled. So this company can also add virgin material. Well, <clears throat> At that moment, you have a percentage of recycled material. You can also have post-consumer material, which is fed in your product. So you have your bill of material on this product, on this process, eh, with three different types of recycled material. Very important, product development and product design from and for recycling. Well, then we have the definition and the calculation of the recycled content. Will we consider weight or volume? Yeah. Calculation on a total product or on the plastic part? Yeah. The low density of plastics are disadvantages in case of weight calculation. But we offer the possibility to the company to use the system he wants. So we don't impose a calculation system. But this could be a calculation system where you have the polymers, the internal recycled material, pre-consumer waste, post-consumer waste, additives, and also metal components or wood components. We'll get a little bit further. So a calculation of, for instance, a chair made with half a kilogram of virgin material, 250 internal recycled material, 200 pre-consumer and 100% post-consumer. I added 30 grams of additive, Recycled additive, it contains some metal and some wood. Yeah. Then you can see in volume that we have high, higher percent, lower percentages than in weight. And we can do it on the full article or on the plastic part. <coughs> now I'm open for questions. Thank you, Wim. Uh, the process that we are going to follow here for Q&A is basically anybody who has a question can please raise their hand and then I will unmute that person so he can ask the, ask the question directly. So if you have a question, please raise your hand so I can unmute you and you can ask a question directly. If there are no questions, it means that everybody understood my presentation <laughs> or I didn't look at it. <laughs> Any questions from anybody? Uh, just I had one question, Wim, if you yes. can just clarify on it. Uh, there is uh, I mean, one of the biggest fibers that we recycle is polyester, right, in textiles. It has a huge volume and it is a unique fiber. It can go from raw material to the finished fiber. And again, from the finished fiber, you can go to the raw material, right? So it has unique properties uh, with uh, regards to this. Uh, do you think uh, when the pet, when the polyester is manufactured from pet bottles and it goes into the seal, uh, and it carries a lot of toxic materials with maybe cook is carrying some toxic materials. How does it hamper the production of this recycle material again? Um, if it contains toxic materials, if you go from pet bottles, the chances of the containment of uh, toxic materials is quite low because polyester in bottle applications is always food related. 99.9% .9 
of all the bottles, eh, if not, let's say, uh, mistreated, do not contain harmful products. The advantage of the, uh, the problematics of the recycling of PET is mostly due to hydrolysis. So by recrystallization over a solid state, you can upgrade the polyester. Eh? If by some means you have polyester, which is, let's say, um, contaminated by, for instance, a spinning uh, oil, at that moment you can also add chain extenders or boosters. Booster is a material which you have tested quite thoroughly, is a material who boosts the properties of the polyester yarn, so you can recycle it and even get back to a draw ratio of six if you recycle that material um, by adding, let's say, 30 to 50 percent of contaminated polyester to virgin material. Okay, I'll take a no now question from Dr. Bhanu Rekha. I'll just unmute her. Okay, so I'll just make the settings where people can unmute themselves. Just a second. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Bhan, just a second. Yeah, Dr. Bhanu, Rekha, can you unmute yourself? Yes, sir, I have done. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so, uh, so uh, I head the School of Fashion Technology uh, in an engineering college named KCG College of Technology at Chennai. Uh, yes. So I'm very happy to see Ruma Ma'am in this uh, uh, in this forum, uh, and uh, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Wim, for this uh, for a very short, crisp, and a very a very clear uh, PPT uh, presentation. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, it has been very clear that uh, uh, I have a few questions from an academic uh, as an academician. Uh, so all my uh, students and as such our faculty are also very much interested in doing uh, doing uh, uh, doing good contributions to improve the sustainability. But as an academic uh, uh, from the academic background uh, as students, uh, what will be the right way to start off? Uh, uh, in this, what kind of projects uh, uh, do you think uh, students can take up? And of course, uh, uh, circular eco economy is, is quite an, uh, you know, it's quite a costly affair as of now. So for students, in what way do you think we can start off uh, as small projects or as part of uh, the industry? In what way do you think we can focus? If you ask me, there's a technological part and there's a humanitarian part. <laughs> if we could convince people that textiles and plastics are not to be littered, at that moment we can also, also gain a lot of material. If we could sort the material at the base yeah, okay. and be able to instruct people what is polyester, what is PVC, what is cotton, uh, the let's say spreading the knowledge okay. amongst people and saying, okay, if you manage that material quite well, we can reuse it. For a lot of people, um, plastics and textiles are waste products. Um, so they, they are discarded from at, at, in quite some time, uh, some short time. Um, if you look now, um, plastic packaging, for instance, mm -hmm. it lasts for two months, three months, and then it becomes waste. If you see the speed in which we change clothing, fashion, with all due respect to fashion, but every yeah. six months you have a new fashion, so you need something new. Reuse is one thing, but collection of other material is better. We all know that recycling is an economy of scale to be able to economically viable recycling of let's say the most common plastic plastics or uh, polymers you need 30000 tons a year to be economically viable if you go into polyester it's even 40 to 50000 tons a year 
to be able to be economically viable. And that's something students sometimes forget. Uh, they say, well, we have 1,000 tons of material. 1,000 tons is practically nothing. That's 25 truckloads. Uh, that's not even one truckload in 14 days, in two weeks. So none, no company will buy that material. And if you want to give information to students, please emphasize on the aspects of economy of scale. If they want to do something, they have to look at it from a bigger picture and try to group materials which are sorted at the base. So that's my project towards a student. I see a lot of pro a lot of students coming, let's say not every week, but every month I have some students and they say, well, I have 300 tons of that material. I have 50 tons of that material. I'm sorry. Look at it from a bigger part and try to get people together to manage that material. And at that moment, it becomes economically viable because there's one main driver in the industry. And that's money. As long as we don't gain money in the industry, we will not be able to sustain the circular economy. It's the main driver. So yeah. get them, get them aware that money is a driver. Yeah. And volume also. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Can I take the next question from Ruma? Ruma, you wanted to ask a question? Yes, please, Yogesh. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, Vim, I think I'll continue what you said and I'll address, uh, you know, certain one, two sentences to Bhanu Rekha, Dr. Bhanu Rekha itself. And we, I, I'd like to recommend that we actually uh, go with the adage that less is more and we conserve rather than use. So, and sorting out is something which has to come in and it has to come in a big way in India where we segregate our waste, differentiate our waste, sort it out so that it is easy to process. And uh, my question to Wim has always been my confusion, which Wim has been able to clear at quite a while, but I would like Wim to go over uh, the explanation of pre, I mean, it's a, two lines, but pre and post consumer waste and industrial recycling. And that part, if you could explain it a little better, there are many technocrats over here who would like to understand it. Okay. Um, you have, as I said, you have three different types of waste, internal recycled material, pre-consumer waste and post-consumer waste. Post-consumer waste, is every material which it's in the ISO 14021 if you want to read the standard it clearly states that it is every material which has finished its expected lifetime and done its purpose yeah? so this means if you have a bag which contains granules for extrusion for filament extrusion the bag itself, once emptied, becomes post-consumer recycled material. If you are quite anxious yeah, and you clean those bags very thoroughly, so there are no residual granules, you have a polyethylene, which is very high grade. Nevertheless, it's post-consumer. If you have a foil extrusion yeah, and you wind your filaments, at a certain moment, some bobbins contain failures. If you throw away those bobbins without processing, it's pre-consumer waste. Yeah. So ma this material has not done its purpose. Once those filaments are, for instance, meshed into a, in, in, into a textile, that textile from the moment that it has been worn one day, it becomes post-consumer material. Everything which does not leave your company can be considered internal waste, except the material which is not reprocessable in the same application. So people who are processing polyester, 
Yeah? They have waste, polyester film, polyester filaments, yeah? polyester yarns. They have waste. It has to pass through a solid state to be able to be reprocessed. At that moment, you have pre-consumer waste because in the standard, it says that it has to pass through a process if you can't reuse it as such. If somebody processes polyethylene and at the end he takes back the excess of the material, shreds it and feeds it directly to the extruder, at that moment it's internal waste. So be aware of the fact it has been used, it can be reprocessed in the same aspect without any other applications, internal waste, if you need an additional process to be able to reprocess in the same application, it's pre-consumer waste. I hope that was quite clear to everybody. But I know there are a lot of conf uh, confusions on what is pre-consumer and what is post-consumer. I think thank that... You, thank you. So I think we will now, with no further questions, we will try and uh, we'll end the webinar. Uh, just to inv inform the audience, the, his presentation, Wim's presentation will be sent to you via a link. And uh, so anybody who wishes to contact you, they can contact Dr. Ruma for, for further questions and answers. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you all for attending the webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Take care.